1,000 days in Minecraft is a really long time, and over the last eight months, I've survived from zero to 1,000, building some amazing creations, as well as a pretty awesome community. I've already told a part of the story in three other videos that you should probably go check out first, but this is the story from about day 300 and how I turned Minecraft into my full-time job. We start right where 300 days left off, with my wings on my back exploring the world and prepared to take my hardcore journey to a whole new height. Enjoy the pun. With so much additional resources, the first thing we needed to do was greatly upgrade our base, and that meant it was time for a redstone-powered sorting system. So next project, here's what we need to do next, is this space. We need to set up a ton of redstone and hoppers and chests and all sorts of stuff to organize and put to use all of the miscellaneous items that we've accrued because it's it's a mess this is something that i've never actually built before i was completely doing this from scratch and i set up a sorting system in an alcove in the jungle that would support 80 unique items as well as a small central area that i sort manually for a lot of the high value treasures because i have an amazing iron farm a lot of the scaffolding and support of this was just built out of iron blocks and felling jungle trees to build all of the chests for all of the hoppers this took about 100 days in and of itself and it's barely looking complete the roof wouldn't be done for another 100 days but all of the redstone and all of the automatic sorting working out perfectly fine the base was really starting to come together and i was exploring areas of minecraft that i usually didn't delve too deep into redstone being one and starting to work on much bigger build projects being the second and given that, it was time to upgrade our nether portal. The little portal on top of the hill was enough to get us started, but I wanted something that looked a little bit more impressive and intimidating. In something that would very clearly foreshadow the project that we would be working on for the majority of this video, I started building a nether island out in the lake and stuck a gigantic sword down into the ground. Yeah, I know, super creative sword portal, but this one, this one is mine. Setting up obsidian to max build height and hanging lanterns from the cross guard and the pommel, I really came up with something that put a little bit more style and personality in this space. It was starting to feel like I wasn't just living in this jungle, I was tailoring it to my will. And we still had a lot of work to do. But with a few builds at home complete, it was time to go out and go exploring. I was about to find two things that would change the course of this playthrough and my life forever. When I finally hit the easternmost coastline of my continent and sailing over the ocean, I found not one, not two, but five ocean monuments in a perfect cross pattern. And I knew I was going to do something special with that center one. And while that would be the project that would dominate a big part of these 1,000 days, something small and rare that I found on my way back home would set the tone in my community pretty quickly. I still don't believe that that's a thing. Tall birch forest? Is this super rare? <laughs> It would be very, it would be so on brand if this is like, this is the second rarest biome in all of Minecraft. We've won. We have won Minecraft. We have won Minecraft. We, we have peaked. We have, we have peaked. We have peaked. We hit. Five, five ocean monuments. And then we hit a pink sheep on the way back. And with that fateful discovery of one of the rarest mobs available in Minecraft, the new challenge was going to be getting my new friend home and doing so without the aid of my Elytra as I had run out of rockets on my way over in this direction. 
and my first thought was to get it into a boat since I didn't have name tags available, forgetting the passive mobs just don't despawn unless they're killed, and the second was getting it leaded and starting to lead it through several different treacherous forests. Now you see, there's something interesting with the AI in Minecraft that makes it a little bit more dynamic. Wolves, when untamed, will attack sheep. So they were something that I was doing my best to watch out for. The first thing I did was set up a little shack so that I would have a safe place to base out of and rest because we needed to wait until night to kill some slimes and spiders to craft a lead to be able to lead our asset back towards the base. That's what we decided to call the sheep, by the way, the asset. Very secret service leading the president to a secret location. The materials in hand and a lead crafted, I started leading the sheep back towards the base, doing my best to avoid whatever dangers I would potentially put it in so it could survive and find its new home in the jungle. And that's when things went a little bit sideways. I'm uh... Found out where I found out how to gamble. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Wolves. There was another one. No! After all of that. With my journey unfortunately ending in death, I flew my way back towards the jungle and immortalized the asset in a place where that still sits to this day in my hardcore world. But I wasn't gonna let this one failure stop me because there was more work to be done. And I, for one, never wanted to run out of rockets ever again. So let's build a creeper farm. Gathering up what little gunpowder I had back at the base, I crafted a few stacks of rockets and set out for a village that I had not yet encountered that potentially had a few cats running around. I knew roughly how to tame them, but I don't want to admit how long this honestly took. When it comes to doing the things that require patience in Minecraft, I'm not exactly the best. Thankfully, doing this all on stream, I had people to talk to while I was standing around and waiting, and a few people oh. popped in and made a huge splash in the community. Ah, yes. Yeah, the lead worked! Thank you! <laughs> Thank you! Whoa! With some new members of the community making themselves known in a big way, I collected my two cats and began running and flying my way back to the jungle base, stopping every so often so the cats would teleport to me, you know, as cats normally do. While on our way back, I found one more desert temple, and this one, this one would be special in the very near future, just keep an eye out for that. But after raiding that and flying home, it was time to build our creeper farm so I could never not fly again. And the ancestors of all the cats in this creeper farm, the ones who would be providing me with gunpowder by just, you know, sitting there in darkness, well, I had to name one chief as a thank you for the amazing support, and then Shadow was named in honor of someone else's pet. And the two of them have been protecting my base ever since. With the building constructed and infinite gunpowder available to me, I thought it was time to actually head back to those five ocean monuments and get ready for a project that would take a majority of these thousand days. A mega build on a scale that I have never worked at before and something that I started in April of this year. But before I could get started with the build, I needed to secure the monument as my own, which meant instead of a build, it was time for a battle. If I was gonna clear one, well, I might as well clear all five.
With the defeat of five ocean monuments in a single stream behind me, it was time to pack up all of my gear and head home. Thinking that the biggest part of the day had just been completed, I stopped my internal recording. So the next bit's from my stream, but you'll never believe what happened next. I'm just looking around because we have rockets for days now and we're gonna have even more after this gets built. I'm like, can we find another pink sheep? <gasps> no way! No way! No way, no way, no way did that just happen! No way did that just happen! No way did that just happen! Okay. Alright. <laughs> Alright. Here we go. Here we go again. What did that, what just happened? We're gonna try flying. There's a huge lake by our can you imagine how pog this will be? Can you imagine how pog this will be? I think I can do it. I think I can do it. It's meant to be. Take a snack. All right, my friend, ready? It broke immediately. We need to stack up and glide. You can't use rockets. Oh, shoot. Co-pilot. Ow! You go away. There we go. Since I wasn't going to be able to fly the sheep all the way back to base, I went back to the village I just recently passed over to roll it over to the next day, and then started on the long trek back home, being very careful heading through the birch forest, and realizing I didn't have a clear path back that didn't interact with wolves in some way. So I came up with a slightly different approach. Sheep is worth everything. Convert the temple to the temple of the pink sheep. That's also true. I could just do that. <laughs> and just say, no, you live here now. We, we could do something cool with this. We're gonna add to the lore of our world. Leading co-pilot into their new home, I started torching up the area and getting it ready for construction and setting it up as a satellite base on this end of the jungle. It would act as a way station between the base and the nether monument project, which would be starting shortly after this. And a fun small build project to work on over the next few days. Center aligned underneath that banner, looking at all of us. We have found our new god. We must do everything we can to please it. And that effort starts with rebuilding the temple. The first things I did was terraform the surrounding area to make it a lot easier on the eyes, as well as covering up a ravine which was right in front of the thing. From that point, it was foreshadowing my future with a lot of sand placing and replacing a lot of water to make more walkable space. While also working on the interior, converting it from entirely sandstone to look a lot more natural with wooden pillars, grass, and mushroom blocks interspaced all around to make my sheep feel a little bit more at home. I was randomly jumped by some people with crossbows out front of the door. Uh, we're not exactly taking new members to this religion quite yet, but you're more than welcome to hang your banners up on the front of the building. And after only a few in-game days, the temple had been completely converted from its old color scheme and function to the new home of our in-game deity, Copilot. And the amount of rallying the community has done around this sheep and the fan art I've received of it are absolutely stunning. Go check Instagram for a few really cool shots. But in working on this project and getting jumped by a random creeper on the other side of my nether portal once, it was time for me to upgrade my gear. Diamond, diamond is nice, but it is no longer the top tier standard. For that, you need netherite, and for that, you need a whole lot of TNT. Thankfully, I just made a gunpowder farm, so I had several stacks of TNT at my disposal, and it was time to go blasting. I made a bet with the chat at the start of this project that I would get a full stack of ancient debris before the end of my first netherite mining session. And I didn't. I got 65 instead. I put the trophy up in my storage room and then revealed why I was desperate to upgrade all of my gear. It was time to take on the next boss in your progression through Minecraft, 
it was time to fight the Wither. And that part of my adventure started with heading back to the Nether, going to one of the Nether fortresses that I had found previously, and running around in circles in search for Wither Skulls. This one, Piglin picked up one of them, trying to be helpful. I helped them fall to the ground, so I was able to pick it up without incurring the wrath of all of their friends. But in general, this took about three Minecraft days, an hour IRL, just to get the two more skulls that I needed, having one that I had received on a whim just a few hours earlier. But since we're playing this for the show, more so than trying to be absolutely safe, I decided instead of fighting the Wither in a cave or sticking it under bedrock, I'd battle it in an open field. And with a few days of preparation under my belt, a shulker box full of potions and gear, and an army of iron golems that I built to support me in this fight, exactly 100 days later than I had died in the Series 1 world, it was time to do the most dangerous thing I had done in this world to date. Thankfully, the Iron Golems did their part, more so in distracting the Wither than actually doing any damage to it, allowing me to go through just a single round of potions, locking and loosing arrows directly towards it, hitting it and enraging it, bringing it to the ground. There, my sharpness sword with fire aspect and my strength potions and my sheer force of will was enough to eliminate it in just mere seconds. Meaning I barely used any of the potions that I had and I had more than enough golden apples to spare. Oh, and you know what? One bonus gap to celebrate. Oh. I don't even care. <laughs> I don't even care. <laughs> oh my god, that was intense. That wasn't too bad, but I was nervous. We only used one round of potions. <laughs> oh my god. We got our nether star though. We did it! We did it, chat! Oh. With the nether star in my inventory, I flew back to my base, used my copious amounts of iron that I had available to me, and created a beacon, marking this jungle as mine, making myself safer than ever before, and taking things to a whole new level. With this available to me now, it was time to start on the main project for this 1000 days. A total conversion of an ocean monument from an underwater sunken challenge filled with guardians to a netherrack fire and lava filled landscape, replacing the entire monument with blocks from a dimension where water is not welcome and bringing that vibe to the overworld in one of the biggest monument projects and biggest build projects I've ever seen on YouTube. Enter the Nether Monument, a project that I started almost exactly three months ago. We returned to the jungle where preparations had been made over the next 20 or 30 Minecraft days, setting up multiple shulkers worth of glass to be able to create that outer circle, as well as a lot of sand and collecting all of the sponges from my rating of these monuments to prepare for the drain, the most time consuming part of this entire project. So I swam to the top of the monument, prepared myself in a little box, avoiding all the guardians attacks and started on the biggest project of my entire life. <laughs> days into the project, I realized how woefully underprepared I was, and despite having spent hours collecting sand and making glass, 
I needed a lot more. So I sailed off to a desert and it turned into a day of exploring. Flying around, finding a shattered savanna, which is one of my favorite biomes to build in, as well as going to a desert to collect as much sand as possible. But in deserts are desert temples. And we made a few other discoveries while we were there. We're just exploring. We're vibing today. We're vibing today, chat. Alright, chest number one. A regular golden apple and a saddle. <laughs> I'm noticing a trend. Chest. Number three. <gasps> oh! Yes! Yes, we found one! Let's With one of the hardest to find items in the game discovered, I was in a mood. So I kept flying around from temple to temple, and shortly after our first god apple discovery, well you you probably know what's about to happen, right? Three and a two and a one and a go. <gasps> and with two of the ultimate healing items in the game in my inventory, you know what? Maybe we should go do a couple other things while also working on the project. It was going to be a big build regardless, so let's do something to spice it up. Why not a raid? Defeating this would get me totems of undying and make my hardcore world that much more secure, which was a really good call with some upcoming risks. So, let's head over to a savanna village, post up on the top of a hill, load up our bow, and prepare for a fight. A raid is one of the most dangerous things you can do in Minecraft if you're not prepared for it. But if you know what you're doing, the battle can be managed and victory can be easily obtained. What I had set up for myself in an unreachable elevated position, being able to just snipe down with arrow after arrow after arrow, meant that this was more of the latter, not the former. So after a brief skirmish with a few of the pillagers, I was able to claim my prize, three Totems of Undying, one of which I stored down in the Cave of Wonders right next to my first set of Elytra wings, and the rest I kept in my inventory for some extra lives while I continued on my build in the Nether Monument. When I returned to the storage room, however, the unfinished ceiling just rang out to me as incomplete. With a big mega build halfway across the world already figured out, I was neglecting things here at home, so it was time to get started on that. And it was nice to return to the more natural building elements compared to the harsh reds, blacks, and browns of the Nether Monument to finish this up. And it came out looking beautiful. Every time I return back to the base now, this is just an excellent place to go to. But with one build project done, it was time for more progress. So back to the Nether Monument I went. The whole theme of this build is corrupting an ocean monument into its most hellish self, which meant replacing almost all of the blocks with nether brick or blackstone. While working on the front, I integrated some red nether brick as well and some gold blocks since gold is the currency of the nether. And all of that gold reminded me that I needed to go someplace very specific and somewhat traumatic for some gilded blackstone. So it was time to pop off to the nether to go raid a bastion. Thankfully though, I've learned from my mistakes and I can both see the piglin brutes and am smart enough to stay far away from them, sniping everything that I could from a high perch, much like I did with the raid. After a tense few Minecraft days, collecting all of the resources I needed from the bastion, I returned back to the monument and started constructing the actual pyramid top of the base, switching it out for black stone and building a bedroom on the interior. This was starting to look like how I wanted it to go, but the work was still so far from done. And the main thing I needed to do was draining. Lots and lots of draining. And the project started to become a little draining, doing it repeatedly on stream. So I worked a little bit in between streams and was able to knock out a large chunk of it while just putting on my favorite podcast. Critical Role, I was basically watching the finale while doing this. In order to make my tools a little bit quicker to repair while doing all of this digging and all of this mining of netherrack, I built a little quick 
Enderman farm in the end that I could get as much experience as possible while not having to worry too much. It's not perfect, it's not a one hit kill, it will get replaced, but it is something to get me started. But as we rolled over into 1.17 and all of the new blocks, this plan was starting to hit an actual point of completion. I'm integrating Deep Slate a lot into the build. I'm integrating a lot of Deep Slate into the build in different places to just bring a new texture for the best version of the nether. And upon discovering this quintuple ravine just crisscrossing over each other with axolotls and glow squids swimming inside, and a geode that I found at one point, this was just a good way for me to crash course into all of 1.17 before getting back to work. I also needed dripstone because farming lava with dripstone became possible in this version and without that there was no way this nether monument was ever going to get done. If I were to talk about every detail of this build, this video would easily be about four hours long. It's been about two months in real time in just working on this single project. And for the first time ever, both on YouTube and Twitch, you're finally gonna see the finished version. But before we get there, let's kick it into a time lapse because we have one last set of builds to go through. Back in January, when I died in my original hardcore world, I thought my career on YouTube was over, but the truth is it was just getting started. As I fly over this build, the largest, the most intense one that I have ever created, I'm just flooded with memories and emotions because all of this was made possible by those of you watching. With the build, or at least the first phase of it's done anyway though, and a milestone achieved, there were just two things we needed to do. I stood on the top of the monument, watching the sunrise of day 1000, with so many people in chat celebrating along at a milestone that we had achieved together. There was no way I would have done this build without so many people to talk to or so many people to interact with. It's what made this possible. The other thing that made it possible was my first set of armor. The original set of diamond armor that I had upgraded into the netherite that I was wearing standing here. And it was time to retire it. I set it on top of the monument so it could watch over this build and commemorate our first 1000 days. With about 100 nervous people watching, I flew back to the base crafted up a set of diamond armor to get myself moderately protected and did one last dispenser of fate, a tradition that we have established hundreds of days ago. As the sun began to set on day 1000, I climbed up into my treehouse and for the first time in about 150 days, slept through the night with a new chapter right over the horizon. And my friends, we are just getting started. This build might be complete, but there are details in it that I wasn't able to show in the video. So come tune in live on Twitch right now. I'm gonna be live all day celebrating the fact that this is my first day as a full-time content creator. 
This is my job now. This is crazy. I have a lot more videos on the way since I'm gonna have a lot more time to be working on them and so many cool projects, so many cool projects in the works that are here for the hardcore world and other projects and other things and ah, I'm so excited. This is, this is so special for me. This is a dream I've had for my entire life. So this is kind of crazy. But until next time, everybody, come tune in on Twitch. Come say hello. Let me know what you thought of the video. And I'll see you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on Twitch as long as we can keep this going. But that's it for me. Until next time, take care of yourselves. Be good to each other. And I'll see you in the next thousand days.